Hi all, it's Neil Rambler here with a quick warning about this video in terms of its quality. Um, there's nothing wrong in terms of my commentary, well at least in my own opinion there is anyway. <laughs> um, and there's nothing wrong with the video. The um, key thing here is that there was a couple of issues with regards to synchronisation. So uh, yeah, there's going to be a few of the old Homer Simpson picture with him going Dow! in this video because uh, unfortunately my capture card just wasn't working very well during this video. Um, with regards to Soma and Life is Strange, I've had to put them on hold temporarily because my computer mouse has died. Um, and I'm having to use my uh, laptop's touchpad, which is not very good for gaming. Um, I have tried to play the games with the touchpad, but it, it's just not very responsive and, and the responsiveness is just rubbish. Um, I have ordered a new mouse. It is the same as the one that I was using before, but it's just going to take a couple of days to get here because I'm also tight for money as well, so I had to get it cheap as chips. Um, so when I do get it, then I shall resume Soma and Life is Strange. Um, and I'll also try and sort out these... Uh, uh, problems I'm having with the capture card. I never used to have as many problems as I am having now um, but obviously as time progresses updates occur and things change and what have you. It could be a compatibility issue, I don't know. Uh, I mean capturing off the uh, N64 can be tricky at times um, but it's not impossible. Um, but I know I have played N64 games in the past where I've done pretty good Let's Play videos with N64 games so I know I, ha I can do it. It's just I don't know. It could be Resident Evil 2 itself. It might just be a tricky game to capture off the N64, but uh, it is what it is. So anyway, I do apologise for the interruptions you're going to get in the video, um, and I'll do my best to work on it in my end so that they are limited in the uh, in the future. But anyway, thank you again for watching, and uh, thank you again for your viewership and all that. It's been fantastic, and um, if you do want to carry on watching them, please do, and I hope you enjoy it. Have a good one, and I'll see you around. Hello and welcome back to Resident Evil 2, the Let's Play with Neo Rambler. Right then, we have more things to do, such as progress through the police station. And that's what we're going to do. Now, at the end of the last video, we managed to get access to the STARS office, which had all of the, uh, well, members of STARS in it, which is quite handy. And uh, we picked up a few bits and bobs and some more files, but we also picked up another key item, this uh, unicorn medal. Something's engraved on the back. Please guide me to the beautiful maiden who turned into stone as she waited for me. Oh, isn't that romantic? And a bit weird, really, thinking about it. If she turned into stone, then does she still remain beautiful even in stone? Yeah, I suppose it depends on your uh, attraction to stone, I guess. But uh, whatever. Now, before we do continue, actually, I am going to... Ooh, I don't know what to do, actually, here. I'm... Hmm. I am going to put the red jewel away. We won't be needing that for a little while. Uh, I'm going to keep the health on me, just in case. I am going to put the uh, ink ribbons away. We won't be needing those. Uh, obviously, we need the pistol and the ink ribbon. Uh, we'll take the grenade launcher. I was debating about whether to take it or not, but I think we will. Now then, I apologise for uploading uh, part two several times. Um, I'm trying to get the sound balance right between the game volume and the commentary volume. It's a bit different when you're recording off a console as opposed to fraps on a PC. Although, to be fair to you, I never really had that much success, uh, that much success with Fraps on a PC anyway. So, um, But it's a bit easier than I thought. And uh, yeah, I think I've got a good balance now. So I apologise for people who commented on part two and then I deleted the video and then re-uploaded it. I am very sorry. I didn't do that to be mean to you. I just did it to get the sound balance right. Um, I feel that I've got a good, uh, a good sound balance now. So uh, we'll work with that. But uh, I'll try not to do that for future videos. So if the sound's a little bit off, I'll, I'll leave it as it is. That way then your comments will stay... Uh, Stay on the video, because obviously I like the comments, so please keep them coming. Anyway, right, uh, what have we got to do? Right, we've got to go and use this unicorn medal. Now, to do that, we've got to go back to the main hall. Oh, hello! Yes, uh, during this part of the game, as we go down this corridor again, the uh, boarded-up windows tend to have zombie arms trying to grab us. Uh, it's very straightforward. All you got to do is just stick to the right of the wall. Or stick to my right, it is the right, with uh, Claire walking towards the camera, that is. Her left, even, I should say. And you can avoid them. If you do get grabbed by them, you can escape. Um, but there is a chance that they will drag you outside and kill you automatically. So try to avoid it. Anyway, we've got this liquor to get past again because uh, we haven't killed it yet. And so I'm debating about whether to do so with the grenade launcher. I'm not sure. Hmm, we'll see. It's very difficult to judge where he is. That's the problem. We can hear him going this noise because he can only make those noises. He can't talk, unfortunately. Uh, the liquor, he's uh, a mute, but he can breathe heavily, and he sounds hungry, so this is quite tricky. Um, do you know what, actually, I am tempted to get rid of him. The thing is, we won't be coming down this corridor that often, um, but we still need to at least a couple more times yet, so yeah, why not? Let's have a bit of action. Oh, boom! Boom! Oh, 
anymore. You don't like that. Is he dead? He is dead. Yeah, look at that. Two grenades to the face and, well, actually to the back even. It's not very English, I know. Not very cricket or sportsman-like, I have to say. I'm a bit, uh, a bit of a coward and a bit of a butthole like that. But, uh, you know, they're quite deadly creatures, Lickers. I think it's kind of like the zombie race things I was talking about at the uh, beginning of this LP. You know, trying to get on with different races. Lickers, again, they can be quite problematic. I'm not afraid to shoot a licker in the back. Just so you know. Uh, whether I should or not, well, that's up to you. You know, if you're a bit more of an honourable person and quite happy to shoot a licker head-to-head, -head, give the licker a chance to fight you back, then, you know, well done to you. You play cricket very well and you're also a good sportsman. Or sportswoman. But I'm not. So, yeah. Anyway, with that over and done with, we can now use this unicorn medal. Now, I didn't really show this statue off at the beginning of the uh, LP when we got to the police station, but an old fountain, something's written here. To obtain the key to open your heart, I'll wait for the unicorn, the beautiful beast. Yep, basically the unicorn medal goes here. And when we do, something falls out of the statue. Yay! Another statue puzzle that gives us items. It's a bit of a running thread in this police station, but there you go. We've got the precinct key, which is fantastic. Let's have a quick look at it, shall we? It's in the shape of a spade. Marvellous. Right, okay then. Now, where do we use this key? Well, that's a very good question. Well, we've got to do a little bit more backtracking again, sadly. Yes, there's a lot of backtracking in Resident Evil. Unless you're really good at it and you've played it like to death and you know where everything goes and everything in which case you can plan your route a bit more strategically however i've only played it a few times recently and well you know my memory's pretty poor these days so there is going to be a bit of backtracking in this lp so i do apologize if that annoys you but uh, it does happen anyway where are we going to use it well if memory serves we've got to head back to the stars office if memory serves i'm not sure if this door can use it it can oh brilliant I had a hunch this door used it, but I also could have thought it was a different key. But no, nope, it's the spade key. Fabulous. Now then, what is in this room? Looks like a... Ooh, a file! Patrol report. Patrol report, September 20th, 9.30pm. See, I like it with the dates like that, because I can understand that. When it's in the numerous form, in the uh, numeric slash form, I, I always get them confused depending on if it's American or British, but whatever. Reporter Sergeant Neil Carlson. Right, what's he got to say? We received a report of a suspicious individual skulking around the sewers in the outskirts of Raccoon City. I searched the area and located the individual, but he ran away before I was able to question him. Damn him. I recovered the following items. A small amount of C4 plastic explosive. That's unusual for someone skulking around the sewers to have. An electronic detonator. 9x19 parabellum rounds. Infrared scope. Broken. End of report. Oh. Well, at least he wasn't a zombie. Files on various cases. Not appear to be useful. Well, you say that, Claire, but I think that one that we just read then might have been quite useful. Copy machine? Eh, probably not. In terms of usefulness, that is. Alright, anything here? Ooh, another one of these EX files. This is number one of 16. Jill's report. July 24th, 1998, Raccoon Forest. The following documents were obtained at a sanitarium owned by Umbrella Corp. Umbrella Bioorganic Weapon Publicity Material. Dev code MA39. Cere Cerebrus? Cerberus, I think it's how it's pronounced. I'm not 100% sure on that one. I think it's Cerberus. Dev code MA121 Hunter. Dev code FI3 Neptune. Dev code T002 Tyrant. In addition to the above, it is believed that several other BOWs were created by means of accidental infection. Probably the zombies. I can't imagine anyone wanting to create zombies as a useful bioorganic weapon. It can have its uses, but as we've all seen in various other games and movies and TV programs, not such a good idea. Unless you're insane, in which case, maybe it is. I don't know. Anyway, during the course of the tests, it was discovered that the contagion is not limited to human beings and may pose a hazardous risk to plant and animal life forms. Oh dear. Effective means of controlling this contagion have yet to be found. Coon City Police Department stars Alpha Team, Jill Valentine. Yeah, she's in the first game, if you're not quite sure who Jill Valentine is. And she's also the protagonist of the third game as well, which we might play at a later date. We'll see. Anyway... Very handy. Thank you very much for that, Jill. So, yeah, she's basically uh, mentioned a lot of things about what Umbrella were doing and the uh, the dev codes that we read earlier, those were enemies of the first Resident Evil game, um, which is quite interesting. Um, and the first game explains it in a little bit more detail as well. Anyway, right. Well, apart from files, is there anything else that we can use in this room? Uh, well, there is actually. There's a very important item in this room. As you can see, on top of the filing cabinet, 
there is a thing and we need that thing. Now, how do we get access to that thing? Well, we can use this thing. A set of stairs. Yeah, pretty straightforward. Just push it along. Like so. That's it. Then you just interact with it. She hops on up and we get access to the thing. Will you take the crank? Well, why not? Looks important. We'll have it. Anything to help us fight zombies is a bonus in my eyes. Although I'm not sure how you would fight a zombie with a crank. I guess some of your uh, imaginative folks out there could probably give us some ideas in the comments section. Please keep it tidy though. You don't have to actually, if you don't want to. It's up to you. It's your choice. But there you go. Fantastic. So we have the crank. Now then, let us get back to where we were originally going, which is back to the star's office. Why are we going that way? Well, I'll show you when we get there. Boo, boo, boo. Back down this corridor of death. Corridor of death. Corridor of death. But no, the zombie arms, they don't come back. No, the zombie arms only come out the one time. They don't come back after that. Which is a bit silly, really. I think they should continuously come out from there. But, you know, considering this game's development history, I can understand why they probably didn't do it. Okie dokes. Right, we're going to pop back into the inventory room and use our item box because we're going to drop that crank off. We're not going to be needing that crank for quite a while, so we might as well drop it off while we're here. Good times. Excellent. Right, we'll drop that off. Uh, again, we'll keep the health, keep the grenade launcher. Yeah, we'll keep the grenade launcher. And of course, we'll keep our key because there's still another use for it, yes. Uh, luckily in this game, once you've used keys up, uh, the game will allow you to discard the item away. How the game or how does Claire know that the key is useless and then allows you to discard it, I don't know. But it's Resident Evil logic, or at least one form of Resident Evil logic. I'm not questioning it. It makes the game a bit easier to play, so we'll go with it. Fabulous. Right, back up the stairs we go. Again, there's not really any extra enemies around here. Um, sometimes there is, sometimes there isn't, so there is going to be a lot of backtracking where not a lot's happening. But that's a good thing, because that means we get to conserve our supplies. This uh, was pretty good back in its day in terms of the survival horror genre, because uh, not only was it uh, sort of pioneering the genre, it didn't create it, but it was pioneering it and mastering it. Uh, you, you really do need to conserve your ammo and health. Oh! Oh! A little girl? That's not a zombie! She needs help? Well then, policeman, go and help her! Uh, oh. Mr. Policeman? Uh, I think the girl went the other way, mate. Didn't go into the wall, as far as I'm aware. Uh, Mr. Policeman? Oh dear. He's a zombie policeman. We better put him out of his mind. There we go. Wonderful! Right, I'm going to quickly stop the video because there's been another frame rate problem, and I shall see you in a second. Right then, okay, sorry about that. Yes, I do have to keep breaking the video up from time to time because of uh, just how old my capture uh, setup is. And not only that, the N64 is difficult to capture footage of from time to time. Occasionally there is some sort of frame rate dropping and there's, there's not a lot you can do about it other than to stop the video. So I apologise again for that oh, picture you would have seen, but it's going to happen from time to time. I do apologise. I could emulate this game, I could, but I don't like to. I like to play them as they are. Anyway! Let's finish off Mr. Policeman Zombie, who's still not dead yet. Oh, he is dead, but he's the living dead, as they say. Are you dead, Mr. Policeman Zombie? You are dead. Good lad. That's how we like to see you. Right, okay. We'll reload our pistol. We've got plenty of pistol ammo for now, actually, so we can afford to be a little bit generous with the old uh, killing of zombies. You've used the spade key. This key is useless now. Would you like to discard? Yep, like I said, we can get rid of it. And let's go through the door. I presume this is the way the girl went, in which case, how did she get through the door if it was locked? <clears throat> well, I don't know. Maybe she had a key as well. Oh! Is that a zombie? Leon! No, it's Leon! And Where? he's not dead! You made it! Yay! I did! Yeah. Have you seen a little girl around here? Yeah, you just missed her. Who is she? I don't know. But it's too dangerous for her to stay here alone. Leon, I'll go look for her. You go and find us a way out of here. Of course. But before I forget, here's a radio. That way we can keep in touch if something comes up. Cool beans. Thanks, Leon. By the way, though, if 
you know, sorry to point a gun at your crotch, Leon, by the way. I'm just uh, trying to make a point here. Ah. Bad joke. Um, if the girl ran past you, why didn't you stop her? You know, being a cop and all. I know it's like your first day on the job, and I know you're in an unusual situation of being uh, in a city full of zombies and your police department also overrun by zombies, but you're still bound to your cop duty, sir. You should have stopped that child if she showed signs of distress, which I think she was when she was running away from the other cop. Although he was a zombie, though. Maybe she thought you were. Oh, I'll forgive you. I'll go look for her. You go and find us a way out of here. Yeah, another thing about Resident Evil is they always tend to split up, which is just silly, really. But whatever, it's trademark. It's not just Resident Evil that does it. A lot of rubbishy horror films do it, or just horror films in general. Yeah. Ooh, more pistol bullets. Fantastic. Another... T Ooh, I think it was 16, if my maths is correct. Oh, good old randomizer. The door is nailed shut. It doesn't look like it can pass through there. Yeah, Sherry runs up this way and she's uh, gone through that little hole there. Pretty straightforward. Cool. Now, Liam won't stand there forever. He will move eventually, but uh, for some reason he just decides to stand there. It's just one of those things. Now, there's another desk here that is locked. We can use the lockpick, which we will. Ooh! Will you take the flame rounds? Yes, I will. This is good. Uh, the grenade launcher, as uh, I showed earlier, obviously fires grenades, which is great. Um, but in this game, and in several Resident Evil games, the grenade launcher can fire different types of grenade rounds. Uh, it can fire normal grenade rounds, which we've seen earlier. They explode uh, when we use them against the liquor. Uh, they can also fire these, the flame rounds. Uh, they basically just burn things. Um, they've got a little bit of impact damage, but the main thing about flame rounds is they set things on fire. So any monsters that get caught on fire, they get damage sustained over a period of time. So it's not a bad... Uh, a bad ammo. I don't tend to use it much, but it can be useful. It's effective against some enemies and not so against others. It all depends. I have no idea which grenade ammo types work against which enemy types well or not so well. I just tend to sort of mix them up. It is what it is. The main uh, type of grenade round you want to use is acid rounds. They tend to be the best ones, especially against bosses. But we'll get to that later. <gasps> Where are we? Ooh, creepy music in the background to notice that we are in a creepy place. Definitely. Well, there's a red herb here, which we will take. Very handy times. Well, we're in what's known as the library. Yes, even police stations have libraries, or at least some of them anyway. So, yeah, I guess we'll go upstairs then, and uh, we don't want to go through that door just yet. That is a door you can go through, but we'll, we'll get to that later. Oh god! Well, that's definitely going to be violating your health and safety report there, Mr. Police Station. I shall make a note of that. Yeah, you have to do that, because uh, by doing so, you get access to this little area of the library, which you can't get to um, unless you do that. Why you have to do that, I don't know. Why the floor gives away, I haven't got a clue either. Uh, but there you go. A bronze plate with a picture on it. Alright. Interesting stuff. Right. What's that got to do with anything? Well, we'll find out. Power switch to the shelf. Will you push it? I will. Ah, so these are shelves of books or files or something. Right then, so basically we have actually encountered another puzzle. Now this puzzle is pretty straightforward. Um, as you can see on the picture there, there's a picture of some sort of soldier holding up the head of something in the one hand and his sword in the other, or maybe even a she. Looks like a breastplate actually, looking from that. I don't know. Either way, a soldier doing something heroic. But underneath there's some weird patterns and some weird lights. Um, those sort of grey square blocks with uh, the weird sort of reddy brownie symbol on them, those are our bookshelves, which we've just got inactivated with the power switch. And the weird sort of blue and uh, yellow lines above them is just some sort of pattern that we have to line the books up with. If you actually look at the way the blocks are aligned at the bottom, uh, that's how we have to align the bookcases around the corner. I'll show you what I mean in a second. So have a good look at that. Alright, and now we can go and solve this puzzle. It's really straightforward. Like I said, a lot of the puzzles in this game are very easy. Um, so as you can see, we have some bookcases here, and several of them have red lights on them. These are switches. You can use these switches to help move the bookcase. And you can actually see that the bookcases themselves have the picture of the soldier above it, and of course you've got uh, all the lines of uh, blue and yellow underneath the picture as well. So it's, it, it, it matches that pattern that we saw earlier around the corner. Now all you have to do to solve this puzzle is very straightforward. Switch to slide the shelf left and right. Will you push it? You need to push the far left shelf, which we're at, to the right. And then the one next to it, to the right also. 
And that's it. Ta da And that's our puzzle solved. Yeah, it's really easy. So there you go. And when we do do that, we get access to this uh, interesting thing. Whatever it is. Will you take the Serpent Stone? I will take the Serpent Stone. Thank you very much. Excellent. What is the Serpent Stone? Other than the fact it's a stone with a serpent on it. A six inch stone with a snake etched on the side. Well, that's just fantastic, isn't it? Okay then, right then, let's continue onwards then. What are we going to do with that Serpent Stone? Well, all will be explained later. It's another key item. We don't really need it right now, so uh, well, we'll press on through these double doors. Oops. I knocked my uh, microphone there. I do apologise if you heard any knocking noises. Oh god! Ah! Zombie! Zombie police! The worst kind of police. You dead? Not dead. He is now. Fantastic. Yeah, this uh, revolver is pretty damn good. Like I said, it's got a very small magazine compared to the standard pistol, but it fires so quickly, it's, it's brilliant. I mean, watch this. It's fantastic. Even at range as well, I think it's pretty powerful. Yep, he's dead. Oh, that's a good old pistol. I love this pistol. Oh, revolver. It's not really a pistol, is it? It's pistol type, but yeah, it's a revolver. I don't know. I don't know my guns very well. I used to, but I don't anymore. Ooh, actually, before we go and uh, deal with that shuffling noise over there, you want to do this. There is an emergency ladder here which you can push, and it allows us access to the uh, main hall, which is brilliant. So really make sure you do that. That's a, that's a good idea to do. Good thing to do, even, I should say. Don't forget it. Right, I can definitely detect some sort of zombiness around here. Oh, hello! Oh, God. Stay away! I know I'm technically shooting police officers, which is not really something you're supposed to do, or should do, but uh, they're zombie police officers. I'm allowed. I'm not breaking the law or anything. It's not murder if they're already dead. I don't know. Oh god, another problem with the recording again. I do apologise, there's absolutely tons of them on this one. It's just one of those things where it happens. Oh dear. Right, back to a sec. Oh, the joys of capturing off old consoles. There's always bloody problems, but whatever. Well, keep going on. Now, we're in this nice small room where we can get access to this, the lighter, which somebody has very conveniently left on a chair over there, which is... Uh, very handy. And also you may have noted that the music's changed to that sort of dull depressing tone of a save room, or a safe room I should say. It is indeed a safe room. We're going to make use of it because we need to save the game. Well we don't have to but I'm going to. Right so uh, grenade launcher are we going to need it? We're not going to need the grenade launcher for a little while so we can put that away free up some space. We're going to stash this red herb away. We might need that later. We're also going to stash this uh, serpent stone uh, we are going to keep the lighter on us, because we are going to need that shortly. Uh, we could do the lighter bit now, actually, but I'm not 100% sure, really, if we should. Uh, um, no, we won't, actually. No, we'll put the lighter away, because we've got to come back this way, anyway. Or have we? No, no, I am going to take the lighter with me. I'm also going to save the game, as well. Oh, God, I wish I knew what I was doing. There we go. Right, okay. So, I'm going to save the game with our ink ribbon. Oh, yeah, more ink ribbon. Good stuff. In fact, actually, before we do, there is a file to read. Secretary Diary A. April 6. I accidentally moved one of the stone statues on the second floor when I leaned against it. When the chief found out about it, he was furious. I swear the guy nearly bit my head off. <laughs> Screaming at me never to touch the statue again. If it's so important, then maybe he shouldn't have put it out there in the open like that. Yeah, that's a referral to the statue puzzle we did earlier. April 7th. I've heard that all the art pieces from the Chief's collection are rare items, literally worth hundreds of thousands of dollars. I don't know which is the bigger mystery, where he finds those tacky things or where he's getting the money to pay for them. I think he might be onto something. May 10th. I wasn't surprised to see the Chief come in today with yet another large picture frame in his hands. This time it was a really disturbing painting depicting a nude person being hanged. Hmm, haven't we seen one of those earlier? I was appalled by the expression on the Chief's face as he leered at that painting. Why anyone would consider something like that to be a work of art is beyond my comprehension. Mm, yes, we will be uh, revisiting that painting some point. Well, we will. Anyway, beforehand we need to save the game. I'll save over here. Super duper. 
Right then, okay. We'll put our uh, ink ribbon away. Uh, now then, do we, we... No, no, we're good for now. We're good for now. I'm just trying to think ahead and I can't remember. Right, onwards and upwards. Well, at least onwards and through the door. Maybe the door is going upwards. I don't know. We'll find out. Oh. Hello. You a zombie? Yep. Well, I have to put you down. Sorry, it has to be done. I know, I know. It sucks, but it's got to be done. Oh god, not a biter! No! <laughs> it's not biting me. I know I'm somehow immune to the zombie fire. Oh boy, she's on danger. That's bad. Oh, that's even worse. Are you dead? Damn it! Back, 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 back. Are you dead? I think he's dead. Yes, he is dead. Right, we need some health then. Oh, that's good herbs. Oh, that's good herbs indeed. Oh, yeah, it makes me feel so good. It, oh. Well, that's not good. I know I'm having to deal with zombies, but a fire as well. Oh, dear. Yeah, we can't go that way, so we're uh, not going to. Instead, we're going to go this way. music. Ominous corridor. <gasps> right. Um, oh god. He's been pecked to death. Who has? Oh, the guy on the floor. Oh, oh more hang on bullets. What have we got? Fifteen. Um, could be worse. Oh god, crows! Ah! Get off me! <laughs> yeah, there's... Uh... Oh god! Ah! Crows! Crows! <laughs> Yeah, crows are um, crows are not good. They don't do much damage though, but they are quite amusing. It oh, oh, oh dear. Well, at least we know what caused the fire, I guess. It was a helicopter after all? After all, I didn't even know what it was to begin with. Hmm, interesting. Well, we can't do anything about that now, so we're gonna have to uh, run this way. Might as well. Oh god, really? Well, at least there's a female zombie to bounce the books a bit. Oh god, this bothered me. Run! Ha ha ha! Too slow for me! Oh god, he's standing there. What's he doing? Oh, he's coming towards me. Oh, and you're coming towards me too. But you've missed me! Good times. Yeah, they're pretty easy to dodge, so. We will. We don't want to keep shooting all of them. I mean, like I said, if we were playing this game on the original mode, I would advise you not to shoot all the zombies. It's probably best that you run away from most of them, simply to preserve ammo. But since we've got randomizer on, we can have a bit of fun. Now then, there is some more ink ribbon here. We shall take that. Um, and there's also something else. The bow gun. Yes, this is Claire's other weapon that she can use aside from the pistol and the grenade launcher. The bow gun. And this is the gun that uh, the man at the gun shop at the beginning of the game, Robert Kendo, uh, used to threaten us. Yeah. Now the bow gun is... it's, it's alright. A uh, powerful bow gun primarily used to hunt large game. Yeah. When it comes to zombies though, it's not the worst weapon in the world, but it's definitely not the best either. But we'll make some use of it. That You can use it effectively. Um, and it, it does well when it goes against... Uh, large amounts of zombies uh, um, the only problem with it is it doesn't have much stopping power compared to a bullet so you've got to bear that in mind if you are going to use the bow gun um, by all means do so um, you do get quite a bit of ammo for it as you progress through the game on original or randomizer mode um, but yeah the stopping power of it is not great however if used effectively it can be a very powerful weapon so it takes a bit of practice but there you go there's a door there in front of us hmm. let's go through it Oh god! Oh my god! Well that's... Oh, oh dear! Ah! Bogun! 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 Yeah, if you try and go through that door, uh, uh, zombies come out of it. That's the only time in the game that zombies actually go through doors. Yeah. It's too dangerous to go back outside. <gasps> it is. <sighs> you don't have to do that. You can completely ignore that door if you want. But for the sake of fun and arguments, yeah, that's what happens when you go through that door. So don't do it. 
But we've done it because, well, we've got to show off the bowgun. As you saw, the bowgun is pretty powerful. In close range, um, it uh, it can be very deadly towards a zombie. In fact, actually, we'll show it off with this zombie here since he's uh, not really doing very much of the spare time. So, yeah, with this zombie, uh, yeah, the bowgun tends to fire three bolts at the same time. Uh, it's quite difficult to see, actually. I'll see if I can do it from an angle. So if I go over here, and I don't mind wasting the ammo to show you it. Yeah, you can see there that it actually fires about three bolts. Um, it also fires three bolts out of your ammo as well. So every time you fire the bowgun, it does fire three bolts. If you go up against the zombie uh, at close range and all three bolts hit the zombie, it will be a one-hit kill, which is pretty handy. Um, aside from that, the bolts, when they fire, they do spread out, so they can hit multiple zombies at once. So it's good against zombies from, I don't know, a distance maybe. Um, or if you've got multiple zombies attacking you, um, it can be a very effective weapon. But that's, the downside to it is it has no stopping power unless you get all three in one zombie and it dies straight away. So bear that in mind. If you're going to take hordes of zombies out with it, which is a good idea because it's got the spread factor, it does hit loads of zombies, um, make sure you're a fair distance away from them. Because if you're not, you will get munched. Just saying. Right, let's go then. Let's uh, ignore it. Just ignore those. Yeah, you can, uh, you can mourn over your dead colleagues or friends or whatever. And you're a man and a woman zombie, I'm sure maybe you two can find something fun to do. Not that it has to be between a man and a woman zombie, it can be between a man and a man or a woman and a woman zombie, but in this case it's a man and a woman zombie. Just so you know. Anyway, we also picked up another key item that I forgot to mention. We've picked up this, the valve handle. Uh, I can open and close valves with this. Good for you, Claire. Good for you. And we're going to do that now, actually. Um, if we go past here, down here, uh, there's a thing that says warning on it. A water pressure valve. It reads, excessive pressure may rupture the water tank. Oh no! But, if we put the valve on it, we'll use it. We can then alter the pressure. And I think we increase the pressure because if you watch... Yeah, we rupture the water tank and it starts to leak. But conveniently enough, it puts out the fire. Yay! Why is that important? Well, I'll show you in a second. Actually, there's two reasons why this is important. Firstly, because you have to do it. And secondly, well... Yeah, I'll get to that in a second. Right, you do get the valve handle back. We can't throw it away. It has multiple uses. We want to bear that in mind. So we'll drop that off at an item box at some point. We're not going to need that for a while. Now, if you go to the helicopter wreckage, you can actually search it. And uh, we'll find some pistol bullets, which is very handy. Um, I think on the original mode, there might be grenade rounds there. I can't remember off the top of my head. I think it is pistol rounds. I'm not 100% sure. Um, the randomizer doesn't affect every item in the game. It only affects some of them. Maybe completely randomly. I don't know. Anyway, we've got to go back on ourselves now. So let's do that. Avoid the crows as well. You don't need to spend time fighting them. You can just run past them. Sometimes they'll get you, but you know, if you're quick enough, you'll be all right. Oh, actually, they are going to get us, but we do need to unlock this door. Uh, we'll come back to that in a sec. There is a reason for that door. It's a good door. You should unlock it. A space bomb the base. Right, I'm going to stop the video uh, briefly just to pause it and then I'll be back in a sec. And we're back. Right, okay then. I think I might have solved the issue of the frames being dropped. Um, there was a setup or a setting on my capture software uh, that I picked that I have now deselected and I believe it's now allowing the uh, capture card to work more efficiently. So again, I do apologize for the glitches in this video, but I might have solved the issue now, which is good. So if we have, then uh, fantastic. There may still be problems in the future though, because my capture card can be interfered with with background programs on the computer. So if that's the case, I do apologize. Um, but it shouldn't happen that often. I tend to turn everything off before I uh, start recording. But yeah, I think I fixed the problem now. So uh, that's a good thing. That's not a good thing, though. That sounded horrible. The door is broken. I can't go any further. There's no choice but to take out the wall. Well, on a date or something. Well, I guess so. I mean, you're quite an attractive person, Claire. I mean, all right, if you want to. Okay. <clears throat> uh, excuse me, uh, Mr. Wall. I uh, couldn't help but notice your fine wooden structure. Seems a little bit... Uh, a bit offsetting, and uh, your doorknob, while uh, a very attractive and big orange shiny doorknob it is, or actually is it golden, I can't tell, I'm partially colourblind you see, uh, is uh, is shining away. I, I kind of but wonder, you know, if uh, maybe you could do with a hand maybe, or uh, you know, uh, maybe perhaps you'd like to, uh, you know, pick yourself up and go on a date with me, you know, it might be, uh, might be a nice idea. What do you think, Dor? What do you think? Oh, the door's not responding. Fine, we'll take it out the traditional way then. 
I'll have to find some means to do that. Mind you, I'm not very good at picking up people, so uh, yeah, that was pretty awful. Right, anyways, we're in this room now, thanks to the fact that we've put out the fire. And this is quite a handy room, because we need to do something in this room. Um, I don't think there's any items in this room, aside for some ink ribbon there, which we will pick up, so that's quite handy. Don't think there's any um, ammo, however, though, so we won't do anything with that. No, I'm not sure, actually. Ah, there is a key, though. The precinct key. Okay, well, that's another one of those precinct keys we had one earlier. Which one is it, though? It's in the shape of a diamond. It's the diamond key. Fantastic. All right, well, that's good to know. What's this? A woman relief. There's a hole about the size of a fist. I'm not going there. I'm not going there. I'm not going there. I am not that. I'm above that. God damn it, game. I told you I'm not going there. I refuse to. An armoured stone statue. The stand reads, Tyrannus or Tyrannus the Brave revives with two lights. Okay. Sure that makes sense to someone. Whatever. Okay. Well, we're going to come back to this room at a later date. So don't worry. There is a reason for that room. But we'll talk about that later. I didn't show it yet. I don't have to talk about it if I don't want to. Alright, okay then. Right, okay. So, what I'm going to do now is... I am going to end the video here. Uh, because I need to edit this video together. Because, unfortunately, I've had to break it up into multiple bits. Again, because of some uh, editing issues. So, again, I do apologise for the uh, interruptions. But I do believe now I have fixed the problem. At least for the most part, anyway. So, hopefully in future videos that won't be an issue. Um, but what we are going to do is prepare ourselves for the next video. So we are going to put the valve handle away. We won't be needing that. Uh, we are going to keep the diamond key. Uh, we might as well put the bow gun away. We have got some bow gun bolts. I don't know, actually. I know before we do that, we'll, um, we'll uh, combine that and that. Yeah, I, I, I'm not really partial to the bow gun, so I am going to put it away for now. It has its uses, but... We'll see how ammo goes. If we do get suddenly get a lot of ammo for it, I will take it with me. But right now, we haven't got much. It's only got a limited use. It's just taking up space. Uh, we are going to keep the lighter. Um, I don't think we really need anything else, to be honest with you. Oh, we'll take the ink ribbon and combine that. Um, no, that... Oh! No, we'll leave that behind. Right, yep, that'll do for now. Okay then, so I'm going to go save the game again. Uh, like I said, you don't have to save this often. I mean, obviously you've got a limited amount of saves you can get. Oh god, it's doing it again. Ow, poop. Oh well, anyway, um, sorry about that. Yes, it's desynced again. Oh, so much for me fixing the problem. Um, I'll have to try and sort it out for the next video if I can. If not, it'll just have to be one of those recurring issues. But anyway, um, in the next video then, uh, we shall uh, carry on with the, uh, with the game and uh, see if we can explore more of the police station because might as well we've got some key items why do we have them what are we going to use them for why do we need them are we going to escape <laughs> we'll find out in the future so can i say thank you very much for watching if you have done and uh yep apologies for the desynchronization again it's gonna happen a lot um and i will hopefully see you uh in the next video so um have a good one